Hey friends, thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Patrick Gard and today we want to talk about a special data grid. Why is it special? Well, it is made by the developers of Blazor themselves and this thing is called Quick Grid. So you can already do lots of stuff with this. But first, thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. I'm pretty sure you know what Skillshare is, but in case you don't, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning and wants to explore their creativity and learn new skills like programming and web development for instance invest in yourself and your personal growth if you have a specific skill you're trying to learn skillshare is the perfect place to start from not only programming and web dev but also photography and illustration to graphic design freelancing productivity pretty interesting for me and more stuff you can find classes that will match your goals and interests like for instance the ones from Marcus Brownie regarding YouTube because well of course I'm doing that stuff so I like it or the productivity classes of Ali Abdan and Thomas Frank I just love that and of course you can also get my course on Skillshare about authentication and authorization with .NET here we cover JSON web tokens roles and refresh tokens so maybe you want to have a look and the best thing is that the first thousand users to use the link in the video description and in the pinned comment will get one month free of Skillshare so what are you waiting for you have nothing to lose click the link in the video description or in the pinned comments to get one month of free Skillshare access and grab all the classes there in particular my authentication course maybe so thank you very much for that and now let's continue with the tutorial all right first let's have a look at the page the landing page of quick grid for blazer here you can see it quick grid is an experimental grid component built by the blazer team isn't that nice and as it states here it's not officially part of .NET 7, but still you are welcome to use it in production like any other third party open source package. And again, since this is done by the Blazor team, I think we should really have a look. And with this tutorial, I also want to spread the word here because it doesn't even have 6K downloads on NuGet and this shall change in the near future. And on, in, in, on, on this page here already, you can see how this thing is used with get started and the source code and so on. Actually pretty, pretty easy. As you can see here, you need .NET 6 or later. There is this package here and there's another one if you want to use this together with Entity Framework. So yeah, you can grab the data from a data from a database context a db context of entity framework so i think this is really really nice and with this tutorial again i first want to spread the word and also it's not sponsored by them or anything they didn't reach out to me i just like the stuff so i i i think it's a great idea to to yeah show you this stuff as well and make quick grid a bit more famous and as you can see here um these are already lots of features you can use and they come out of the box and as you can see here again uh, you can uh, choose entity framework as well for your data and this is how it's then done your context and then for instance one specific entity type you've got a couple of column options here you can use a template column for instance property columns you can add sorting, filtering, pagination is here as well. As you can see here, virtualization, this is nice. In particular with .NET 7, they even improved the virtualization, meaning that only the stuff that is really seen on the page is rendered. So if you have millions of results, then they won't be rendered like with a typical table. Here, this is different. So this quick grid thingy is also using virtualization or is able to use it and you can change the style. Isn't this nice? This is, I think this should be the default style really. This looks really, really great. Okay, so I would say enough about that. This is also the NuGet page here. So let's just use it. And I'm using Visual Studio 2022, the preview edition because I want to use .NET 7. Again, not necessary here, but well, why not? We've got the release candidate by the time of recording this. So uh, let's say Blazor quick grid first look. Oh, my names are getting better and better for these projects. We've got .NET 7 ASP.NET Core hosted. Well, why not? Because we can then use the weather forecast 
default data here with a quick grid. And before we run this, let's have a quick look. We've got the weather forecast controller, nice. And here now on our fetch data page, we've got our table, right? And this is what we want to replace. We want to use quick grid now. And again, for that, we add a new get package. So right click the clients and go to manage new get packages and make sure to choose the browse tab. And here, this check mark is also very important when you do not check this or activate it and you are looking for quick grid, then you get only one result. I have no idea what this is. Didn't have a look really. Sorry about that. Maybe it's something nice. I don't know, but I wanna use this thing here. Include pre-release and then you've got the Okay, this is not possible here, maybe now. Yeah, all right. So now here you've got components quick grid and you see only 6K downloads. This this can't be true, right? So we have to download this a lot more. So uh, yeah, this is the package and this is, I think, the package then you need for uh, if you want to use Entity Framework Core or Entity Framework 7, made a video about that. Entity Framework Core 7 is now called Entity Framework 7 because the old .NET Framework is divorced. Anyways, we, we talked about that in the other video. So let's just use this package here, quick grid, it shall be install the alpha version. I accept this is done. And now we just say quick grid. All right, and with control period, I can add the using directive here. Great, so now we've got it up here, awesome. And now the very first thing we need are some items. We need an I queryable for that. And I'm doing it a bit dirty. We got the forecast here, right? This is just an array. But what we can do now is forecasts as queryable. And then all of a sudden this works. Okay, so this is not enough, we first have to also define the columns, right? And for that, we've got the property column uh, component, property column it is. And now the property we want to see here is now with a lambda expression, F for forecast, first the date, for instance. And that's it. With that, we see the date. Since we need this a couple more times, let's just copy and paste it. So for instance, for the Celsius temperature, the Fahrenheit temperature, and also the summary, and now let's say we've got temperature C, then temperature F, and here also the summary. All right, let's just save this for now and run it. And that's it, right? So you can imagine that if you built these tables here, for instance, earlier, or in the past, then you know, well, this is sometimes tedious work. And this is how it is done with Quick grid. And there's our quick grid. Isn't this crazy? It's already done. Of course, you can change the design, right? You can change a lot more like resizable columns, the format here of the date and so on. So let's try that maybe. So regarding the date, we can add the uh, format parameter. So the format now here might be something like, I don't know, let me let me just see the complete day. And then the date, complete month, and then the year. All right, so let's save that. And it is, yeah, we wanna, of course, rebuild and apply the changes. And yeah, now we see the day, the date, the month, and the year. This is great. Maybe we can also change the, uh, the name of these columns here so we can add the title. Do that with uh, temp. C for instance, and also like that. Oops, it's, this should be Fahrenheit. Okay, this worked. And what else can we do? Well, we can make this sortable. So maybe we add sortable true. And let's also add this here and there, save that. And now we can click on these and you see that we can sort by dates, temperature Celsius and Fahrenheit, but not summary, all right? And what I also wanna do, actually, I wanna make this resizable. So resizable columns, it should be. And now we can even resize this stuff. Isn't that nice? All right, so these are really basic 
things actually. I want to show you two more things that I think are really interesting here and these are the column options and the a template column. So first the column options. Now what's that? You could actually say for a specific column you well you want to add a little menu and do whatever you want to do there. For instance if you would like to use a filter option here then you could add an input field. I actually created another video about a filter field and I don't want to uh, write it or implement it here. So let's just say this is an input field. Nothing special. And uh, with that then already you could see it here in the actual uh, column here. See that? Right? So now I've got an input doing nothing at all. But if you would add more logic of course then you could choose this and well implement your custom filter here for instance. Or if you are using the new uh, data bindings, then you could even make new calls, for instance, with the bind after modifier and so on. So lots of possibilities here. And another thing I really like is the template column. This means that you could simply add another column here. The template column it is. And now let's just say we add a little diff and a span. And in here now I want to write something like wow, it's really and then context. Context, this is the, the value of the, or the object of the current row. So context and then summary today. All right. And with that, when we save this and have a quick look, it's reloading and there it is. This is now our new column, the template column. So it really uses a template and uh, uses then any well value you want to add here as well from the actual row or whatever it is you want to use here, right? So again, this is done really, really quick. So we've got a, a data grid with lots of functionality here, lots of features here already. You can add template columns, you can add column options. You could also add pagi pagination. So we, we did sorting actually, filtering with these, with this help here, then also virtualization and so on. So lots and lots of stuff already for you here with this tiny little component. Well, it seems tiny, but it can do a lot of really, really powerful stuff. And this is everything for today, actually, what I wanted to show you. I will push this to GitHub so you get the code. But again, you can also just check out the page of Quick Grid and there you will also see lots and lots of options. For instance, uh, with these template columns, you could also add uh, images, for instance, buttons that will do something. So lots of possibilities here, really. I just love it. Check out the link in the video description for the GitHub repository and check out Quick Grid. Please do that. And with that, this should be it for this tutorial today. So there you have it, Quick Grid it is, created by the developers of Blazor WebAssembly. And you can already do lots of stuff, although it is in version 0.1, I think it was. Well, in alpha mode pre-release it is, but I think there will be more and more stuff coming. You don't need .NET 7 for that. You can already use it with .NET 6, but it started with .NET 6 when I read this properly. So uh, yeah. Let's have fun with Quick Grid, I'd say. And if you learned something and like this stuff already, then I would really appreciate it if you click the like button, maybe even subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much for that. And maybe you wanna consider subscribing to my newsletter for even more .NET and Blazor stuff. Or maybe you just hang out a little, check out these videos on the side and watch another video and another one and another one. And then you know lots and lots of stuff regarding .NET and Blazor. So thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for your time. And I hope I see you next time. Take care.